everyone, welcome to part two of developing our inner critics. Um, this is Ainsley and I'm April, and we're gonna help you develop your very own six panel comic strip today. And this is going to be based on the book Small Things, which is a story about a little boy who experienced his inner critic. And it explains through images, and we're gonna get to do that today as well. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who may have forgotten, um, I'll just briefly describe what our inner critic is. So basically it's that little voice that we hear sometimes that is maybe nagging us or saying not the kindest things. And we hear these voices in our head when we're trying to do our homework or we're trying to socialize or we might be out and about playing like recreational sports. And, and our inner critic says all sorts of different things. And Every inner critic is unique to each individual. And we also have an inner champion, and our inner champion is kind of the other side to the inner critic. It helps us build ourselves up and make us feel victorious and fulfilled and, and really our best self. So um, we're gonna be exploring and using those characters within our comic strip that we're creating today. And I'm excited about this because within the comic strip, we're going to be kind of addressing how we can cope when our inner critic begins to approach us. Mm -hmm. So so for today, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use our inner critic and champions that we developed in part one. Um, so uh, this one is my inner critic and this one is my inner champion. And these are the images I'm going to use for my comic book strip today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, first things first is we're going to grab a piece of paper, just like this, and we're going to fold it into six sections. So, it's, it's easy, but sometimes it can be hard, so I'm going to show you how you can do that. So, you're going to take your piece of paper like this, and you're going to first fold it long ways, okay? And then once you're done folding it, you'll have six different panels. So after you fold your paper long ways like this, you're going to fold it inwards from both sides and they're going to touch each side like this. So can you see how it folds like a book inwards? Yep. Okay. And then we're going to press and fold that down. So in the end, you're going to have six squares just like this. And, and then in each square, you're going to have a different goal for developing your comic book strip. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll um, go into that. So basically, um, I have labeled here is we're going to start on the left side. The top left of your paper would be number one. And then moving towards the right, two, three. And then you go back to the bottom, um, lower corner, four, five, and six. So, um, you can add the dark black line if you want to enunciate the gutters within your comic strip. That's what they're called. Um, but it's up to you. You can add it maybe afterwards, after you create your images. But right now, I'm going to tell you what's going to go into each uh, little square. So, in your first square, you are going to create yourself in an environment. It can be any environment that you think of. Whatever comes to mind first, maybe. So all you have to do is draw yourself and put yourself in a setting, in some sort of environment. It might be outside, it might be in your bedroom, it might be at school. So I want you to think about where you're gonna be and you're gonna draw yourself there. So for example, uh, for my first square, I drew myself painting outdoors. And that would be my very first square of my comic book strip. Awesome. So next, in number two, you are going to draw yourself in that environment, but now your inner critic is beginning to approach you. It's starting to come towards you somehow. So I have my drawing here of my inner critic is starting to show up in the space that I'm in. And remember, while you're going through each panel, if it helps, you can pause the video in each section until you're ready to hear the next one, mm -hmm. okay? So this is number two. You can see myself, and then now my inner critic right here has appeared, which is just like the one that I've created before. Awesome, thanks April. And then in number three, 
the, the, the content you're putting in here is what you can do when your inner critic approaches to make yourself feel better. Or what are you going to do? How are you going to react? You can also show how that might be a struggle. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't always know what to do and, and your inner critic kind of takes over. Mm -hmm. So personally for me, it's hard when that happens. So I drew this one for that step. And you can see my inner critic is present. And as I'm painting, the energy from my inner critic starts showing up in my work. And I, I was trying to confront it, but it ended up taking over. And I wasn't quite sure how to deal with that just yet. So this square kind of describes that, and that would be number three. Awesome. Okay, number four is similar to number three, but it's going to be a different way. Say number three didn't work. Whatever you were doing in number three, it's not working. Now number four is something else you can do when your inner critic approaches you. What else? What else can you do? So for mine, what I did was is I decided to confront my inner critic in a kind way where I decided to stop painting, take a break, I put all my tools aside, and I decided to talk to my inner critic and ask why it's there. And I just simply was saying, you know, what is it that you're trying to say? What are you trying to communicate to me? I know that maybe it seems scary at first, but I think there's a good reason why you're here. So I decided to draw myself communicating with my inner critic in a kind way. So that would be number four. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, April. Number five is the third attempt. So say maybe not everything's been working so far, or maybe they have. It depends on how your story is going. But what is one other thing you can do when your inner critic approaches? Okay, so for mine, what I did is I started to paint again. And my inner critic began to change. It used to have a lot of strong energy and fill the space. Now it's become smaller and my, my painting is starting to turn into a different image. So this is me kind of working through that. And that would be number five. Okay. Awesome. And then your last image, number six, that is going to be um, yourself taking back your power so it's up to you if you want to include your inner critic in the last frame or if you want to include your inner champion or it might just be of yourself in, in, a, in a setting. Um, there's a little bit of freedom in image number six. So April, what did you decide to do? So for mine, I decided to show my inner champion in the painting like I had done before. Awesome. So you have see my image of my inner champion here. So my inner champion becomes the development of my painting. And I, my inner critic has become very, very small and it's become kind of like somewhat of a friend. And this is something that I experience a lot while painting. My inner critic comes a lot and it's hard for me to be creative, but this was my way of learning how to um, be friends with my inner critic and embrace my inner champion. Mm -hmm. So I'm back in the environment I'm in with uh, that painting completed, which would be number six. Awesome. Okay. Awesome, thanks April for sharing that. So I'm going to share with you my, the cartoon that I made. The I would strip. love that. I think that I'm so excited to hear. Okay. Could you come up with things? Well, like? first I'll remind everyone of my inner critic and my inner champion. So here we are, we have my inner critic saying things like, don't be a bother. Don't take up too much space. You should always be nice. And not caring for yourself, basically, was that one. And then this is my inner champion. It was more of just uh, shape and form, okay? So here we are. Um, notice, just like within the frames, how you can use space differently. Mm -hmm. So notice that, um, you know, the inner critic might be really small in certain areas. Other times it might be really up close front. There might be different perspectives that you're looking at the images and the characters at. So really keep that in mind. You might want to put one image might be super, super, super small. And you have to think, why is it small? There should be a reason why it's small. Okay, so what is it saying? You also want to think maybe if you want to add font, 
and words into your comic strip, that's more than welcome. But I want you to think about the different types of font. If it's cat blocked or if it's small and jittery, think about how that is going to make its sound when people read it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in the first square, I have myself and I'm planting in the garden. And then all of a sudden, my inner critic sneaks up from behind a tree and he's starting to approach me. So I take a hose and I try to hose him down and I hose him away and I try to scare him, okay? And it didn't work, okay? So I tried to just get him out of here. So then I tried something new. I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna dance it off. I'm gonna dance, 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 pretend he doesn't exist. I'm all good. <laughs> Everything's great. And he just got really confused and that didn't work either. So then, Last but not least, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna take some of the plants from my garden and I'm gonna give it to my inner critic. And my inner critic was kind of confused, but really happy that I offered a kind gesture I was carrying towards this inner critic. And, and I felt compassion and, and, um, and loving energy towards this inner critic. So that's what I ended up doing to address my inner critic and it felt really, really good. And then all of a sudden the inner critic was gone and I was able to just lie in my garden, take up all the space I wanted, let the sun shine down and similar to April, but not the same. Mm -hmm. However, you'll notice I have some of the same elements of my inner champion in the final image. So you'll see I have some of the same colors. I'm using the rocks as boundaries and it's, it's a similar energy. So it was really fun to be able to create this comic strip. So now I know that there's different things I can do when my uh, love, inner critic approaches. I love how you created a little bubble for the thoughts that your inner critic is thinking. And that's a really nice way to communicate different things that are happening through symbols or words. So like Ainsley said, if you're thinking about the different font to express the types of words you're hearing from your inner critic, if it's really, really loud, you want to think about maybe an example of uh, a comic book where when something's loud to happen, it goes BAM! You can have your loud words in a bubble with like spikes coming out so it makes it look loud because mm -hmm. sounds can actually be described through drawing. Yes. So here Ainsley has drawn what that could possibly be represented as. Yeah. 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 So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and um, thank you so much for joining us. We really enjoyed creating with you. So good luck in developing your comic book strips and I, I am really excited for you to be able to express your different thoughts and emotions and ideas about your inner critic and inner champion through drawing your own comic strip. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.